The Land at Scale program aims to strengthen essential land governance components for men, women and youth to contribute to structural, just, sustainable and inclusive change at scale in lower and middle income countries, regions and landscapes. This program is supported by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands and the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Knowledge management is essential to the effective implementation of the Land at Scale program. It is conceived in a comprehensive and adaptive way that integrates documentation, learning and sharing. Knowledge management means bringing in state-of-the-art insights to strengthen interventions, reaching out to make relevant knowledge available to the right people at the right time, and sharing lessons learned in the program with a wide audience. In this series of short videos, we explore three key aspects of the knowledge management program within Land at Scale. These are adaptive programming, South-South exchange, and monitoring and evaluation. Each of the video presents evidence and insights from experts working in the land governance sector. This video is focused on South-South Exchange and the relevance of joint learning within a larger program. Through South-South Exchange, partners can share and learn from each other's knowledge and experiences. In this video, we have asked a range of questions to experts to share their insights. In, um, in the context of Prindex, um, actually, we have looked both at um, you know, experiences between the Global North and the Global South, um, but particularly um, South-South exchanges. And I would, I would put it less in terms of deliberate efforts to encourage South-South exchanges, but just a very natural progression. Um, and that just being a very natural space for um, for shared learning to, to, to happen. Um, we have uh, regional engagement coordinators in Prindex. They, they are a key part of our strategy um, to, to be able to generate learning to, for us to learn from, from our partners in the South. Um, and they are very active across the different countries in the regions that they, um, that they supervise. So we have, for example, a regional engagement coordinator for the Latin America and Caribbean region, one for Southeast Asia. Um, the, uh, we, we have it for the UNECI region, um, uh, the African region and the MENA region. Um, and we have a, um, you know, a hub with a, a, a partner in India, the um, National Center for um, for economic research, the NCAR in, um, in India, who, who runs the South Asia um, Regional Engagement Hub. So it really does emerge very naturally from, um, from the activities that, are, that are, are, are carried out there, where we have, I mean, we, we work uh, very closely with the ILC. Um, and through their network and in some regions, particularly with, with FAO. So we tap into those networks as well um, and, and all the partners and organizations that are operating, operating there. And I, as I said, it's not, not so much of a deliberate um, strategy to encourage learning. It just, um, it, it just happens innately actually. Um, it is really paramount that this um, exchange should be initiated and follow up and, um, um, and in a continuous and a sequence basis. Yeah, We've, we, we did the first South-South exchange. That was a pilot testing how this can be, that can be done and how we can really do it in a systematic and structured way where we can really um, um, harvest the outcome, the positive outcome on this, and put it in in a in a in a, and help to develop knowledge product that can be shared with other stakeholders. In 2019, we organized the first mere learning uh, day 
in Bogota, in, in, um, in Colombia, where we brought all our partners from the South. And the basis, the, 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 the intention were to listen and understand our partners' um, uh, capacity and, and uh, knowledge about resource-based monitoring. What do they know about reduce monitoring? What have they been doing in the other project supported by other donors on this? What are their, their key um, um, gaps, the key challenges? And how can we better support them? And um, what is their understanding about cross-cutting issues when we talk about it? And so we, we in that, uh, in that um, uh, exchange, we, 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 we enable the partners to share among them, those from um, um, Africa, Southeast Asia, and um, Latin America, their different understandings and experience on, uh, on result-based monitoring and evaluation. So based on that, we could identify some um, partners that have more capacity, more experience, are more exposed. And then we could identify some partners that have very limited capacity and limited experience in result based monitoring. And then we develop now a, a, a support strategies, capacity needs support uh, strategy on how we can better improve or strengthen that capacity. And, and support them in, in their project monitoring and evaluation. Yeah, that was the first. And then we, we, we all initiated to conduct auto monitoring, which is a Southside collaboration in this different um, region where we worked. The first one was planned in 2021 in Africa, but we couldn't do it because of COVID. So we are hoping to, 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 to do this first South-South collaboration in Africa in 2022, because it, it, it is difficult to do this um, online because you really need, um, we need, we really need the partners to be physical so that they can better engage and understand each other. And it is, that type of engagement also be a sense of trust and uh, it also be a sense of, um, of, of a community where they can now mobilize to do things together in area where they have commonalities. When, when we do exchange among partners, we don't only focus among, among the partner, we bring in the duty bearers, the government, government agencies that are involved in, uh, in land governance and land institutions, because they are um, uh, the guarantor of right. It is, um, uh, it is important to understand that securing land tenure, you cannot do it without the government. So we bring the government agencies on board to be part of that exchange, because also we realize that in some of the countries that we, 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 we work, there's a lot of work to be done on land administration, on land governance. That is the um, um, authoritative mandate from the government. So they, we also bring them on board to understanding processes. And in that process, it also strengthen their capacity. And in that process is also build trust. We've been very successful in doing that. For example, in, in Panama, where we have helped um, the, the, our indigenous people organization now building very good relationship with the Ministry of Environment. And they are now very, there's a lot of more increased co collaboration and cooperation, which were not before. They were like two enemies. In Liberia, it's another very important case where our partners are really um, create a very clear uh, a platform for dialogue team and they value increase uh, their relationship with the Liberian Land Authority and they're working together.
we think at ILC that South-South uh, learning exchanges are extremely important uh, because we know that ILC members hold uh, a lot of knowledge that they can share with their peers, both at country level and also across countries. At the moment at ILC, uh, the main initiative through which uh, this learning happens is Land Collaborative. And the focus of land collaborative is uh, specifically on land practitioners at country level and specifically those that are part of multi-stakeholder engagement at country level. Um, and this learning happens mainly in dedicated learning cycles or knowledge exchange sessions. And what we really want to promote is horizontal learning uh, between uh, participants uh, in these uh, cycles or sessions. Uh, also, what Land Collaborative tries to do is to support the implementation of this learning so that uh, the learning doesn't stop when uh, a learning event or a um, cycle uh, finishes. Um, something that is also very important is to make sure that um, what is exchanged is properly documented. So especially in a network like ILC, we really want to make sure that uh, this learning and exchange goes beyond the participants of a certain program or initiative and is also available to other ILC members. You know, building in, in resources into a program um, to take into account the, the investment that's needed to build close partnerships, particularly if you are trying to organize data collection and analysis together um, and learn from each other and make sure that you really understand the, um, the way that each organization works. And um, I, think, I think it's very important to build into the structure of any, any program and, you know, be realistic. We, you know, we we are very ambitious with Prindex. We're constantly, you know, responding to a lot of requests from different countries to to engage and build partnerships there, and um, you know, which we're we're delighted with. And we we do have to be careful that um, that we have the capacity to respond respond to those because. You know, on, on both sides, um, there, are, there are different institutional cultures, or not on both sides, because it's not just a bilateral um, uh, arrangement or, or relationship. But it's, yes, as I say, it's getting to know the institutional cultures, the inter individuals um, involved, the, the, the way that each institution operates. Um, and really making sure that you build in time to, um, to create those personal relationships and, and that trust. I think the other thing that we've, we've learned is that um, it would be helpful in these programs to have more structured entry points for learning. So we think, for example, that, that the, the Nelga initiative is a really good way to build partnerships on knowledge management and knowledge generation um, by, you know, and there are, there are large economies at scale of doing that. If you can, for example, you know, co-generate a curriculum with the partners in the, NEL, you know, in the NELGA initiative, um, if you can, you know, use that, that curriculum to then, um, you know, jointly, jointly deliver capacity building or technical learning programs. I think that that could be a, a great way to, to scale up learning um, beyond you know, investing in, in individual or uh, bilateral partnerships. We have learned that it is uh, essential to collect information on learning needs uh, of uh, potential participants in learning cycles. So um, that's why Land Collaborative has carried out a needs assessment, focusing both on thematic interests and also on more technical capacity building needs. So this way we can make sure that uh, the opportunities for learning that uh, we make available to uh, land practitioners um, that um, are part of our members 
um, are really responding to what is most important to them. Um, uh, securing um, uh, indigenous people land right is paramount. It's an, a strong enabling condition. It's a strong trigger for other developmental goals to happen. We've also learned from these different exchanges that if you secure collective land right, it will help reduce conflict. Another important aspect that we have paid attention on uh, in the past uh, has been um, the need for research that IOC members have um, expressed in different ways, different uh, fora. And we have tried to address uh, such needs by uh, supporting and facilitating uh, research initiatives uh, that have uh, brought to uh, results, uh, data, findings uh, that we have made available to uh, ILC members and also, of course, to the broader land community. One example is the research initiative on land inequality that the ILC um, has uh, led uh, in 2019 and 2020, and that uh, has culminated in the publication of uh, 17 reports on land inequality and a synthesis report called Uneven Ground. The way in which uh, the research has been conducted uh, has been by facilitating a collective effort in which a number of ILC members have participated. So the research has been a collaborative research that has really relied on the capacities and the strengths, the previous research and the expertise of ILC members.